Hey guys, my name is Rudy, and I am so excited to do this episode. This is all about the lightsaber. This is the Savvy's Workshop Experience. Going to talk about the lightsaber, the maintenance, the experience, a couple of tips, all kinds of stuff coming right up. Here we go. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, my name is Rudy, and my channel is all about helping uh, people do stuff and things. Uh, this is part of my uh, my nerd area, I guess. Uh, Star Wars. I guess between Star Wars and Star Trek, I've always been a more of a Star Wars kind of guy, but the older style. So, uh, what I've done is, uh, for the last uh, couple of months, I plan on going out to Orlando, and I want to do the Savvy's Workshop Experience, which is the way to get one of these cool lightsabers. There are uh, four different types, I believe, to pick from. Uh, what I would do is I would look on the website and I would pick which one you want. So that way you're not pressured and you kind of know what you want your stuff to look like uh, whenever you select it. So uh, a couple of things. First off, uh, when you go to the experience um, and you try to plan it, it's most of the time pretty full. Continue checking and checking. Uh, seems like the most popular slots are early in the morning or late in the evening. So uh, for me, here, here's the funny story. Uh, my experience was scheduled at 8.30. The park opens up at 8. Actually, for the public, it opens up at 9. So uh, this is an issue I called, and they said, oh, that's not a problem. So uh, the parking lot uh, the where you pay your money to get in, they charge you, uh, they open up at 8 o'clock sharp. So I bolted in there, and I went right to the gate, and they let me through, no problem. And then there was a big crowd, and I was trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, finally asked one of the cast members, I was like, hey, uh, I got an appointment, uh, where do I need to go? They're like, oh, talk to the cast member over here in the blue. So, before you get to the crowd that's being blocked off from entering uh, the Star Wars land, uh, these guys are actually uh, meant to check your name off a list, and they should actually have a better signage of some sort, but if you don't ask, you'll never know, and you'll stay there, and you'll be late for your appointment. So, what you want to do is uh, look for the cast member, they'll check you off the list, and you'll go through the back way of getting in. And you'll start your Star Wars experience. So, uh, first off, I have to say, really good quality. I'm actually really impressed. I mean, this is a really nice sword. It's got several uh, different uh, sound effects. And I am truly, truly happy with this product. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple things. Uh, first off, we're going to talk about uh, changing out the actual crystals here. So there's the black crystals thing here, uh, minus, of course, red. And I wanted to pick the color. So the one that they came with, I chose green. You get to pick the crystal that you want. And I bought a blue and I bought a red. To change these out is actually pretty simple. All you do is you loosen the top over here just a little bit to get it off. And this part right here slides right out. It's color coded, blue to the blue. Same thing on the other side. That just pops right out. And the crystal sits right there. It's a push up, or you can put your finger up here, move it up to take the crystal right out. The crystal actually is coated with a, uh, a chip that tells it what color it is. Actually, uh, most other sabers I've seen before, at least the cheaper ones, what they did is it projects the color that you got. Not the case in this scenario. So we're gonna start with the red crystal. These things are 14 bucks. I think that was the actual price. And of course, it's gonna get stuck on me. Luckily, I'm prepared. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, now we're going to show you the red crystal. So, the red crystal slides right in. I would move this thing up a little bit right here. You can hear the RFID was the word I was looking for earlier. So, then we put blue to the blue. And we put the other side here. Red on bottom, blue on top. And kind of for the save us some time here. Now you got Darth Vader. Of 
Pretty cool sound effects. While we're here, we're gonna do one more. We're gonna do the blue crystal here. So again, now despite the fact that this on switch is actually up here in my hand, this will make sounds as you're removing crystals and taking them out because of the RFID. So taking the blue one in, let's see if this comes out any easier. There we go. This is the blue one. Take the blue crystal and you push it in over here and you line it up. I think that's just pretty cool. Lock in the switch. And normally you would screw these back on. We're going to go through this here in a minute as to why we do it this way. And the two pieces are locked together. Oh, no, they're not. Okay, make sure my crystal is in the center. And glue on top. I'm just going to make me look like a liar here. One second, let me reseat this. Okay. There we go. And glue on top. And we're locked in place. Like I said, a really cool product, what I can tell you. Now, we're going to talk about assembly. Uh, one of the things I, I told you that I'm going to be very honest in my reviews, uh, the experience is awesome. Uh, it's well worth the money. Again, the product I feel is very good quality. The one thing I didn't like is, so this piece right here on the bottom, I don't know if it's just the piece I selected or the combination, but this piece wouldn't go on. I had three separate people trying to put this in. And the person who was leading the, uh, the presentation just kept on going, even though I was having problems and I wasn't the only one. I was thinking, maybe it's me. I don't understand. But uh, anyway, um, so this thing just kind of rattled. It was kind of sitting in the state like, like this uh, as I had it. And I walked outside and they fixed it outside. Um, I really felt like the person who was leading it could uh, actually slow down like every other actor. And uh, till my, my stuff got caught up so I could do the same thing with everybody and have one solid lightsaber. Also, the cool thing about it is it comes with this really cool carrying case, which makes it a lot easier to carry around. I went ahead and put mine back in the car because I didn't want to walk around with this all day. But uh, that's kind of what it is. So let's talk about uh, some of the uh, maintenance and the disassembly here. So we're going to go through our disassembly process here. Okay. So first off, the blade itself. You push down and you turn and it pops right out. If you try to turn it on right now, sounds like it's got it short. Okay, next thing we're doing is we're going to unscrew the collar. Now all these are some of the set pieces that you can actually get and you can pick the different collars and different parts that you want. Here's my bottom piece that also screws in kind of like a flashlight style. top color and the piece that I had problems with this one right here the grip okay so that comes apart then you're left with your starting piece now um, this is what I want to oh yeah sorry there's also these two parts right here one side of the collar on the other side like some mine the one I chose was the protection there is a total of four options to pick from again I would definitely go out and research whatever you want to do before you get up there you can still select up there but uh, again I felt like it's a little rushed experience okay so now we're going to talk about what powers this thing and how to make it work so what we're going to do here is we're going to turn and sorry I don't have the exciting part of this thing uh, we're also going to remove the crystal which is right here again so you can I would put your finger up there and slide the crystal out again RFID is what determines it not the actual color okay so now you're left with this piece this is where the magic happens 
So what you're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver. There is a screw right here on top. You can turn it a couple of rounds. And it's actually designed to kind of stay. Okay, so then the sleeve comes right off. And you're left with three magical AAA batteries. Pretty simple. I was actually relieved that it wasn't some kind of proprietary module. Anyway, um, also, this goes in. So, you got the screw. I don't think it's possible to put this in upside down. You just have to match the top piece with your screw that you just had and slide it in gently. Now, during the presentation, you actually get this already put in. Make sure I don't have my right side up, upside down. And I'm going to embarrass myself because I think I do have it upside down. Aha. Okay. There's also a combination here that allows you to put it in only one way. Quarter turn. You can kind of feel it clicking. And it's in. And now I'm going to kind of show you how we actually put this thing together uh, at the presentation. So took the top piece. This is going to be fun. It's been a while since I've done this. I'm going to do this out of order. So you got orange and blue up here. Orange down here on the bottom. That's in better this way. And same thing here. You got the blue on top. Then we're going to put in our holder. Now, this is my problem child, as I said before. I think it was just the fact that it wasn't broken in. It's pretty solid now. It doesn't have any issues. I'm going to attach the bottom piece now. And, of course, the top collar. Okay. And, of course, the upper piece. You don't want to point this to it, and you've got your alignment just like I did. Now for the magic moment. Let's do the dark side. So that's one thing I should have thought about before. And you have to loosen these to get the get get this in there. Okay, a little bit. There we go. And as soon as this thing senses something is in here, I'm kind of a, it does have a, a little sweet spot where it actually locks in. This is the way it should look. And we're going to put this back in place. There we go. Nice and solid. Collar is nice and solid. Okay. All you got to do is attach the blade. The blade will actually go, it goes in one way, one way. Find the slots. You got the big slot right here. Turn. That's a new one. Hadn't made that sound before. And of course, you want to do an ops check. I say success. So, let me go through my list of things and make sure I covered everything here. Um, you can buy more crystals, as I said. Um, you, there's a big selection. Uh, the battery we talked about. Oh, um, and the two time slots. There are three time slots you should come up for this experience, uh, usually early in the morning or the last thing in the evening. Uh, those seem to go. I'd say don't give up and uh, just try to check those cues on your My Disney experience. Of course, uh, as this video gets older, the process may change. Uh, the other thing is I want to talk about Rise of the Resistance. Rise of the Resistance was freaking awesome. Uh, the thing that a lot of people don't know, or not everybody knows, is there is a virtual queue. 
which is very frustrating. So at 7 a.m., you can log in from anywhere, and I swear you got like maybe three seconds to try to get a slot. Uh, it's right on the homepage. You try to put in the virtual queue. You click on it, and the app pretty much laughed at me. So at 1 o'clock again, about 12.59 and something, I started doing it because then it's limited to people who are actually, I'm not sure if it's at that park or at Disney uh, with GPS coordinates uh, that makes it work. But pretty much uh, I got in. Uh, the ride was awesome. Uh, it was a lot of fun. So uh, I'd like to hear all about your uh, Savvy Workshop experience, your lightsabers, if you own them. Uh, what you like about them, what you don't, what brands. If you guys got questions on anything, let me know. And uh, may the force be with you. Till next time, take care.